Hello everybody, this is Jamie the Board Game, back again with another episode, and this time we are going vintage, just because I haven't gone vintage the last few episodes, so I thought I wanted to go back to the year 1995, where this is a was a Yahtzee game that was called Yahtzee Deluxe Poker at one point, and they changed the name to Last Chance. Now in this game, you're bidding, you're betting, and you're rolling dice just like Yahtzee. Very, very cool game, and after seven cards, whoever has the most in poker chips wins the game. So let's go check this out at the gamer's table right now, where I'm going to show you how to play Last Chance. All right, everybody, here we go with Last Chance. Let's go ahead and open up the box so I can show you what is inside. Uh, right on top is the instruction booklet. As you can show, it does say two to six players. You open it up and you have some pictures and illustrations. They did a really good job showing you how to play the game. And if you are a Yahtzee fan, you'll definitely pick this up right away. Um, like I said in the intro, this used to be Yahtzee Deluxe Poker. So. And then later on, it was renamed Last Chance. So this is the instruction booklet. You also have this really cool dice tray. Really good plastic. And you also have the five dice. Got Definitely got to have those. And you also have poker chips that you'll be betting. And here are the different denominations in the game. The white ones are 100. And then you have the green ones that are worth 1,000. Then you have the orange that are worth 500. And there's only a couple of these in there. It's 10,000. Okay. In case you're a big bala. All right. And then we have these little player tokens here that every player gets one of these. On one side, you have a four-leaf clover. And on the other side, we have no. And then we also have the cards that show all of the different roles that you need to get in order to succeed. And you can see here, this is one of the examples where you have to roll these five dice. But you have up to four times to roll it. So it'll show you whether you have four times, five times. You also have three rolls, and I believe there's some twos in here, too, make it a little more difficult. Um, but I think it's usually from two to five rolls. And then the payout. In case you do succeed, this is how much you would win if you do succeed. All right, so let's go ahead and show you the setup, and I'll show you how to play. Okay, here is the setup for the game. Everyone starts off with 5,000 in chips, so what each player is going to have is they're going to have three 1,000, three 500, and five $100 in chips. Everyone's going to receive one of these tokens with the four-leaf clover and the no on the other side. You've got your five dice, and then you have the cards. What you're going to do is this game plays in seven rounds. So you're going to go ahead and take seven cards. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're going to place them right here in the corner, and then the rest of the cards will go into the box. Okay? Now, every player, what they're going to do is they're going to start bidding on whether they think they can complete the card or not. So let's go ahead and flip over the first card. And you can show right here, you need to roll a one, two, three, and two fours. And you have four rolls in order to complete it. And if you are able to do so, then you win 2,000 in chips. So the first player is gonna go ahead and set this over here. And then the bidding begins. Now the bidding begins with the person that owns the game. And in this case, it's moi. So I'm player one. And what we're gonna do is each you're going to start bidding back and forth. So I'm going to say I mean I can do it three hundred dollars. This person says I want I can do it in four hundred dollars. Oh, I can do it in five hundred dollars. Okay, you know what? You go right ahead. It kind of reminds you of name that tune. You know I can name that tune in three notes. Well, at least the numbers go down. This one you go up. But anyway, um, so let's just say player three wins the bidding, and he has to put up the five hundred that he said he can do it. So he's going to put up five hundred. He's going to put it right in this little front tray here. Okay. Now, what these are for, these are the little side bets that each player is going to guess whether you think that player is going to get that card or not. This means yes, and on the back side means nope, I don't think so. So let's just say, for instance, player two decides, you know what, I don't think you can do it. The most you can wager on a side bet is $1,000. So let's just say he goes, nope, I don't think you're going to do it, I'm going to bet $500. So he puts $500 next to the no. Player one says, you know what, I have faith in you. I think you're going to get it. So he's going to go ahead and put $500 next to the yes. Okay. And then the rolling begins. Now, like I said, he has up to four rolls to complete these five dice. 
So let's see what player three does here. Player three is going to roll. Ah, he got the three. He's got the four. And that's, I believe, all we got on that so far. Cause oh, no, there's a two also. Almost missed the two. So now all he needs is a one and a four to complete it. And he has three more rolls. Let's see what he can do here. Here's that one. There's the one. Now he's got two more rolls to make that four. Can he do it? Yep. And he does not. He fails in doing so. So first and foremost, the player loses his bet to the bank. Okay. But player two over here said, nope, I don't think you're going to do it. So he's going to win $500. I'm going to take that $500 right back and give it to player two. This player said, yes, he could get it. So he would lose this $500 to the bank. Okay. Now, the dice stay on the card. Okay. And bidding goes around again. 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, you know, as much as, much as you want to go up to. As long as you don't uh, go more than what the amount of chips you have. So let's just say player two ends up winning the bidding. And he wins with this $500 bet. And now player one and three are going to think, do you think you can roll four in four rolls? Player one says, oh, heck yeah, I'm going to bid 1,000. He's like, well, you know what? I don't think so. I'm going to put no over here. And I'm going to bid, I'm going to bid 300. Okay. All right, so now player two has four chances to roll just a four. Can he do it? Two. Five. Five, uh-oh. And he fails to do so. Oh, man. So this player is going to lose this $500 chip. He's going to lose 1000 And he's going to gain 300 from the bank. Okay? So let's give him $300 in tokens from the bank. And there you have it. He wins 300. And then it's going to happen again. The bidding goes around because we need someone to win this card. Let's say, say player, you know, player one says, okay, 500. This player says, you know what? I, I don't think you're going to do it. I'm going to bid 500. This player says, no, I don't think you're going to do it. He's going to bid 200. Now let's see what happens here. We've got a six, five. Boy, I'm horrible at this. One more roll. Let's just say I rolled that four, okay? <laughs> Can't seem to do it. So anyway, so all of a sudden, he succeeds. Player one succeeds, gets that final die that he needed, okay? So first and foremost, he's going to win $500. He's going to take this back, and he's going to win. Now, this player said no. I don't think you're going to do it. So what happens is if you are successful, anyone that said no to you, you get their money. So this person said, nope, I don't think you're going to get it. Well, guess what? I did. 500 goes to that player. This player also said, no, this $200 will also go to this player. Okay? So when you say no, your money might go to that other player. Okay? And that's how that works when you actually complete the card. And then the card comes to player one over here. And then he gets the $2,000 for completing the card. So just like that, he gets $2,000. So let's go ahead and take $2,000 out, just like so. And player one made out like a band at that time. You got the 2,000 plus another 1,000 from those two. Or I'm sorry, 700 because he had 200 and 500. And then you keep get to keep the card, okay? And now the bidding starts once again. Now you're going to go ahead and draw a second card. But in this card, you see we have some jokers, okay? Very interesting. Now in this card, you only have three attempts to roll the dice. Now when you get a joker on a card... You can choose any number you want to fulfill that joker, but let me show you how this works. So you're going to go ahead and place this here. Bidding commences. Okay, bidding goes back and forth, back and forth. And let's just say player two wins. He bet 500, and I think yes, and then he thinks no. Okay, so now he's going to roll the dice up to three times. Let me show you what those jokers show here. So we got a four and a four, which is great. Now... The jokers, whatever number you choose to do the joker, the other numbers must match that number as well. So if I choose a 1, 5, or 6, let's just say I chose a 5, okay, as one of the jokers, these jokers all of a sudden turn into 5s. Okay, so whatever number you choose, that's the number you have to roll the rest of them. Okay, so now I have two more rolls to roll two 5s to complete this. Can he do it? Oh, didn't do it there. And he didn't do it there. So that means I failed in that, and that means obviously he would lose the 500, he would lose this 500, and he would actually gain 500 from the bank for that bet, okay, and so on. And that's how the jokers work until you get to fives, 
And then when you roll the two fives, you would win the, the card. And then uh, play convinces. Play keeps going. And you can see there's other ones. This has just numbers on it. This one has two different sets of jokers, but it goes with the same thing. Or whatever number you choose, all those other jokers must match that number that you chose for that one joker. And that's what the jokers are for. So you've got another jokers here as well. So they do get a little tougher. And you can see this one, the one I just showed you here, look how much this one is. $4,500, but look how many rolls you get. Only two. So that can go back and forth. Now, you might want to make a house, roll, a house rule because you don't want to sit there and roll, 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 roll. Next thing you know, so maybe... You know, there's there's different ways of doing it. I know Norm from the Board Game Museum, which I, I love his channel. He has this game on his channel, and he mentioned something I really like as well. He said, uh, you know, if nobody gets it within three times, the card is thrown out, and then you just, you know, play on it, go on to the next card. I think that's a great idea, because um, this this can go on and on and on and on. So that's up to you. If you want to keep it going, that's fine. But if, you know, nobody gets it within, like, three rolls or three times, then that's it. And I, I like that rule as well. So I thought I'd throw that in there. Depends on what you want to do with that. And then what you do at the end of the game, when all seven cards are dealt out, obviously you're going to add the number, now all the uh, amounts that you have. You're going to count all your poker chips. Now, in order for you to win, you must have at least one card in your hand. So you can't have, you know, player one having four of these, and then let's just say player three has this, but you have the most chips. Well, unfortunately, if you have the most chips... And you don't have any card. You didn't win any cards. You cannot win the game. You always have to have at least one in your possession. Now there is one thing you can do. Let's just say you're getting low on chips, and you're, you're not you're not really able to bid successfully because you, you have such a low amount. Say you only have like you know 500 left. Okay. What you can do is you can say last chance. What happens is when you say last chance, all the bidding stops immediately. All bidding stops, and you win the bid. Okay, you put all, let's just say you have like 800 left, okay? When you say last chance, like I said, all bidding stops, everything completely stops, you win the bid, you have to put all in. So you're pretty much going all in, in other words. You're going all in. Okay, 800, you know. You're going to try to get this one. Okay, you're trying to get that one. And what you do is you go all in. Everyone still does the side bets. Everyone still does those. And you're going to try to roll these dice four times and see if you can actually win it. So that's, uh, that's just for... That's for the heck of it here. Uh, one, three, and four. Let's see if I can do it. A two. There's a one and a two. Oh, I'm sorry. There's no two. One. We get three and a four. And obviously he'd be out of the game because you didn't be able. Wasn't you were not able to fulfill that card. So obviously you'd lose this. Whoever you know bet yes or no would win their bets, and then you would go on. So you do have the last chance bet. You're only allowed to do that once per game. So make sure you choose wisely when you want to use that. And uh, that, my friends, is Last Chance. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have the game and you've played it, let me know down in the comments below. Or if you've never heard of this game or never seen it. And maybe you're interested in getting it because you watched the video. I would definitely love to hear that. So uh, once again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Hopefully you become a subscriber. And until next time, everybody, thank you so much for watching Last Chance.